Now then, now then, Robert, how are you doing? Good, you figured it out, huh? Uh, yeah, it didn't come up, there was no button there. So, we're on now, who cares? Man, what kind of accent is that? <laughs> oh, it's a crazy Yorkshire accent. Halfway up the country and nobody understands us. <laughs> That's what the guy... Was... And, and I have been told to tone it down, so I'm trying. <laughs> That's what the guy was, was joking about on your page, about... He said something about the language, and he goes, there's nothing wrong with listening to that. Oh, yeah, there's no chance. No chance. <laughs> but we, we can't tell a word the Southerners say either, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, from, I'm from New Orleans, and we speak a little differently as well. Indeed, indeed. What, what's, a, what's a New Orleans guy doing in, uh, in Yonkers, then? You know, Dave, I've always dreamed of being in New York. I want to be in the middle of it. You know, and the funny thing is, I don't drink. I never drink. I've never smoked. I don't party. But I always wanted to be where the action was. That's fair enough. So what do you do? What do you do? Uh, yeah, obviously very healthy. Healthy lifestyle. No, I, I eat too much cake. <laughs> oh, don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> cake? Bake it. Do you bake a cake as well? No, I, I used to bake bread. I don't bake any oh, cake. Oh, I love, yeah, love, yeah, great stuff. Yeah. Who, who has time to bake cakes? I eat cakes. Uh, well, fair enough, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got a good bakery down our road, so, uh, yeah, there's probably a bit too much of that going on here as well. <laughs> All right, so I need you to slowly... <laughs> right, slowly, oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to slowly tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Right, well, uh, I'm uh, Dave Dolby. I am from Yorkshire, which is halfway up the UK, uh, just about the central ge geographically of the country. Uh, I, and I'm a wood turner, and, and that's all I've done all my life. Um, all right, stop. Right. All right. We're going to get to that. Yeah. All right. So before, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Right. All right. What word or phrase do you use the most? Hmm. Um, um, definitely um. um. Now then, which nobody knows what that means. <laughs> I was about to say, you need to translate some of this, I'm sure. <laughs> now then, now then means how you doing, and, and silly means a similar thing. Uh, I probably say goober too much as well. I'll call people goobers too much. I mean, that, that, that flaming goober's coming again. I can do without him. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. I don't, say, I don't say like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what is your least favorite thing to do? Oh man, um, mowing the lawn. <laughs> you have a big lawn? Sadly, yes, yes. <laughs> and and and, and, my, and my wife don't really like doing it either. So, uh, so yeah. So that leaves I, I, you. I, I, that leaves me. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. It's a big lawn, and we have a tiny mower, so it takes forever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, what is your most favorite thing to do? Uh, probably camping with the family in the you countryside. Camp? When I get chance, when I get chance, yeah. It's not often, and certainly not this year. But uh, yeah, when I get chance, I love that. Yeah. Okay. Wait. Wait a second. Let, let's define. Camping. Are you right. glamping or camping? Oh, God. Camping. We've glamped. We've glamped and we've done 38-foot 38, 38 RVs around New England as well. Uh, so we, we, we've done it all. Uh, okay. But, uh, yeah, uh, camping in a tent with a, with a, a gas stove uh, and a sleeping bag. That does me. Yeah. All right. Okay, good. That, that's, that, that's our role. That's, that's, yeah. that's the way to camp. Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes in my van. Uh, occasionally, occasionally, yeah. I, I think, I think, uh, getting the age I'm getting now, and we have talked about it over the last few, uh, last few years, uh, probably going to get a camper, uh, a little camper van or uh, RV or something. All right. What, what is the one thing your spouse will want to change about you? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, can, I, I, can you get her I, on, please? <laughs> uh, I very much doubt she'll be anywhere near this. <laughs> I believe, I believe, I believe my daughter's watching. She might shout something. <laughs> uh, I, I, she, she will probably tell me, uh, uh, probably say that I should wash up more. 
especially <laughs> last, thing, last thing at night, just before bed, and uh, I've always got a mucky cup there waiting to be washed up. Uh, <laughs> And probably, probably, probably actually to finish what I start. Uh, there's projects all over the house that are unfinished. Yeah, same here. Stuff yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Start and stop, start and stop, start and stop. Um, Indeed. Indeed. What makes you tick? Um, music. Oh, what kind of music do you like? Um... Wide and varied, just good. Um, hey, so, Dave, Dave, I want you to pause for one second because Steve just came in. Hello, Steve. It, it did. <laughs> Come on, Steve. What you gotta say? <laughs> um. So, <laughs> what makes you tick? Uh, yeah. So, music. Uh, uh, I can't, yes. I mean, it's very, it's very strange in here. Um, to, to be quiet. Um, when I when I enter this building, the radio goes on, and it don't go off till I leave. Um, what do you listen to? Uh, generally speaking, through the day, uh, the radio's on just as background noise. Uh, when the lads have gone on and there's only me working here, or on a Saturday morning when there's just me, uh, then uh, yeah, the iPod goes on and, and whatever's on there. Um, anything from the Beach Boys to good guitar-based indie music. Okay. So, so you listen to a little bit of everything? A, a little bit of everything, yeah, but um, yeah, I, I like to say good so, stuff, I suppose. You, you like Taylor Swift? Oh, <laughs> that's mad. Someone yeah. put that in the Oh, we can't, we can't beat a bit of Swifty, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what's the best concert you've ever been to? Oh, the best concert I've ever been to, definitely. A couple of years ago, my son bought me uh, tickets for the Stone Roses last concert it, well it, it it turned out to be the third from last concert it just took, just took the road in leeds uh, stone roses were were my favorite group from the 80s and 90s uh, you've probably never heard of them um it's it's the only gig i've ever been to where every member of the crowd sang every word it, it, it was phenomenal yes there's there's yeah. not to me there's nothing better in a concert than everyone in unison singing the song absolutely 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 and, yeah, yeah. And, if, and if the performer is good enough and can read the crowd he allows them he lets them do it definitely form. definitely yeah 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 uh before that before that was probably a, a, a little set at glastonbury uh one year uh we saw me and a few mates saw a, a group again you'll not have heard of them it's called cud who uh c-u-d who, who were um just a phenomenal set. It was just a, an hour set, um, and it just happened to be right. They were good. The weather were good, um, and, and that's stuck in my mind for twenty years. Okay, let, let me ask: Do you dance? Yes. Uh, badly. <laughs> <laughs> but you do I'm, dance. I'm fifty-three year old, and I uh, I'm a dad. No, I, I, I avoid it like the plague. If I'm very very drunk, then yes, maybe. <laughs> what are you drinking? Uh, a cup of coffee. Okay, all right. I was just wondering if there was any scotch in there. I figured maybe at the end of the, the hour you'd be dancing. Uh, no, no. It, it'll take a lot more than that. <laughs> all right. What irks you the most? Oh. Uh, how, how deep do you want to get? I mean. <laughs> right. right, we only have Man an hour. Mankind. <laughs> you know. Yes. We're in, we're in this together, and uh, yeah, the sooner we realize that, the, the, the better. better off we all will be. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there eventually, but it's taking some time. Yes, yes. Uh, and um, all other drivers. <laughs> <laughs> drivers are, there, uh, are bad there as well. Uh, drivers, all drivers are bad, except me. What kind, of, what kind of car do you drive? Do you drive a, a larger car, a smaller car? No, no, I drive, I drive a, 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 little, a little Ford van, um, which does me. Um, I've always had a van since uh, the first vehicle I ever bought was a little Ford van. And I've had se several vans ever since. Um, uh, Mandy has a, a nice big uh, Volvo estate, which we swan around the country in. But uh, yeah, I just drive a van from, uh, from here to home every day and um, the odd delivery and what have you. Okay. 
What sound makes you the happiest? Oh. Well, I, I'll have to go back to it. The sound of, uh, of waking up in a tent with, with, with some faraway sheep. And uh, I don't know, the, the, wind, the wind gently making the tent flap a little bit and uh, somebody far away snoring a little bit. They've had a little bit too much to drink the night before. Uh, I love that sound, just waking up in a field, listening to uh, the campsite wake up. I love that. Yeah, great. All right. Uh, yeah. If you had to travel cross country on a motorcycle, who would you take with you? Oh, how long are we going for? <laughs> um, possibly, possibly, well, Mandy, my wife, we're inseparable. Uh, <laughs> failing that, failing that, uh, my daughter Maddie, who, who loves being with me, and we used to go delivering all over the country, and we used to have some good times. She's a bit older now, so that doesn't happen so much. How, how old is she uh, now? She's uh, 19, 20, 20 in August. Okay. So when she was 7, 8, 9, 10? Oh, we were all over the country. Damn right, she says. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all over the country. Yeah. Um, my, my son's 22 Oops. now. And when yeah. he was younger, he used to go on deliveries with me. Yes, yeah. And, and once he realized it was work? Not so much. <laughs> He stopped. Yeah, yeah. If you were in a bar and a fight broke out, would your wife be more likely to call the cops or grab a gun? Uh, cops. Guns are unlikely in this country. Uh, cops, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a hypothetical question. It's metaphorical, I know. She, she, no, we, would, uh, we, uh, we wouldn't be in that situation. But uh, yes, uh, she would call the cops, definitely. Uh, her brother-in-law, however, would probably be more useful. <laughs> oh, sorry, my right. brother-in-law, Mandy's, Mandy's brother. <laughs> her brother. Um, yeah. If you had to go to a car game and there was a possibility of a fight breaking out, who would you bring with you? Oh, Mandy's brother. Yeah, Same Tim. Guy. Tim. He is, uh, he's a fantastic negotiator, is Tim, and he will talk his way out of anything. But if he can't talk his way out of it, then we're safe. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, absolutely. What's your favorite curse word? Oh, fucking hell. I mean, the old ones are the best. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. All right. Handcuffs or scarves? Sorry, say that again? <laughs> Handcuffs or scarves? Uh, scarves. <laughs> What profession, other than your own, would you like to try? Uh, oh, Stacey. You used to work for us. Now then, Stacey. Um, I don't know. I mean, doing what I do and the way that I do what I do, I do a lot of other stuff. Um, uh, engineering and building work and things like that, because I've always done everything myself. Um, if, I wasn't, if I wasn't in a creative profession, I, well... Probably architecture, which is still creative, but uh, yeah, architecture might have been interesting. Okay. So would you want to be like a design architect or a working building architect? Uh, a good architect, because most of them aren't. I, I, would, uh, I would be hands-on, definitely, definitely. Yeah. They're, 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 uh, I have a bit of beef with architects. I, I, I think they spend all their years at university trying, finding out how to pass the book. Um, <laughs> Look, uh, um, uh, and, and I have come across a few architects who are worth talking to, uh, but they're the ones that do. They don't design, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah th that's why I asked the question. And, and Jack English just joined on, and he agrees with us. Now then, Jack, when you're coming over, see me and Bruce. <laughs> um, what would you want in your tombstone? Dave Dolby, he did all right. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough for me. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I he, no he made some stuff and it's, a... uh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you were such a character. <laughs> uh, I, 
I didn't know I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we start with your journey. Right. right. And we start, we take it from high school and tell us how you got to, to where you are now and, and the different things that, that pointed you in this direction. Uh, well, it starts before high school, really. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, um, I suppose I, I, I was always going to be a maker of something. Um, that sort of, it was written in the stars. My mum, my mum was a dressmaker. My dad, whilst he, he wasn't a professional maker of anything, he, he was always doing things. He built his own house. He built our house. Um, uh, and he had a, a, a well-equipped shed and he, he was a, a gifted amateur at everything he tried. Uh, um, so it was always sort of casting stone that I would be making something. Um, uh, and I just started when I was, when I was very, very young, I just started messing about in my dad's shed. Uh, and I suppose woodwork was, was where it fell to. Uh, and, and I, I posted a, quite a long post a couple of weeks ago, actually, as where, where the first time I ever turned the lathe on. And I can remember it to this day. Um, wow. about 19, well, uh, details, I think it was about 1980. Uh, and I was uh, I was in my dad's shed. Um, How old were you? Ten. Uh, so so I was thirteen. 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 I'd been messing about. I'd made things. I, I, I'd, I'd you know I'd been always by my dad's side, making and helping make things. Uh, but anyway, this this day I was I was stuck in the shed. I was actually listening to the radio because I wasn't allowed in the house with the radio on. Um, uh, I, and I was a little bored. And my, my dad, my dad, do, do, do you know, are you aware of those, those little lathes that are sort of a pressed steel thing and you put an electric drill in for the headstock? Yes. Really small things. My dad had bought one of those a couple of years ago and had a go and, and didn't really take to it. Uh, so, so I thought, what the hell? And, and I, uh, I stuck a bit of wood in there and, and uh, I couldn't find a tool actually. So I, I ground, uh, this is all very familiar to anyone who read this post. I ground up my dad's longest screwdriver, which didn't please him. And uh, I turned the lathe on, and, and, and uh, effectively, I'd made a skew, a uh, skew chisel, and stuck it in the bit of wood, and, and, and wow, uh, I got a shaving. And that was it. I, I was hooked. It, it was always going to be wood turning in one form from that point. So, yeah, 13. Yeah. Wow. By the time, of the, by the time I ended high school, I, I was already selling stuff quite successfully. Um, uh, I, I, I stayed on at high school. Um, we, we did, I, I don't know, I, I can never get my, hand around, my, my head around your system, but we have high school which finishes when you're 16 in this country and then we do two more years of either college or stay at the same school to do the exams that then get you into university. Uh, so I stayed on at school. Um, by this time I was teaching my woodwork teachers how to turn wood. Um, uh, I, I stayed on at school, and then just before my 18th birthday, I left. Never intended to stay at school. It was just a means to an end. Um, my teachers expected me to go to university and do physics or something, I don't know, uh, which I, would, I could have done, but didn't want to. Uh, so, yeah, just before my 18th birthday, I, I left school and, and set up my business. And, and yeah, that's it. Wow. So you, so, you, so you were 18, 19, and you had your wood turning business. Yes, yes. I, I'd been, so I started, as I say, I started when I was a kid and, and, and my dad encouraged me. Dad saw what was going on and he encouraged me and he bought me a proper lathe. And well, actually, we'd made our first lathe out of uh, some oak, um, oak bed and, and some standard parts that you can buy. And we made this lathe and that was, that was pretty good for quite a while. And I was selling the usual things, the bowls and uh, egg racks. I made egg racks and sold them to all the neighbours. That was, that was a great little earner for quite a few years. Um, so yeah, I was selling stuff, and 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 I thought, right, I can, I can have a go at this. I'm going to do this full time. Uh, I had a I had a a thought maybe that I might make furniture. Uh, I do enjoy making furniture, um, but I, it never really took off in that um, because the wood turning did. Uh, so yeah, so when I was 18, I was already earning money as a wood turner. Um, and then there's a little story about you could, you, when you were 18 years old, you could get a grant back then because the, the economy was in such a state that they gave you a bit of money to set up a business. Uh, and I took advantage of that. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, we, we went from there. So at this age, how big was your shop? 
Were you tiny, still tiny. With... I, I was still in my dad's shed. My, 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 dad, uh, my dad had a big shed. It was, it was, part of it was a greenhouse, so it was quite hot in there. Um, so still in the shed. And I, I managed that for now then. When did I buy the first workshops? Now then, that means now then. <laughs> um, when did I buy my first shop? I think it was 1991. So 24. So yeah, so I was in, in no, it must have been earlier than that. Uh, so I was in my dad's shop. Uh, and we were getting busier and busier and busier, uh, and I just outgrew it. So I looked around and I bought a little shop. You uh, purchased the shop? I, put, I, put, I bought a little workshop. Yeah, you can't, you can't really call it a workshop. It was actually a, a, um, a bakehouse for a, for a pie shop, um, or it was originally. And it, it, it was a tiny little building, maybe, maybe 800 square feet in total. Um, and that was actually just up the road, about a mile up the road there. Um, and I, I converted part of it to, to living accommodation. So I, I feel you, Bruce. Uh, somebody knows what that means. Um, and I, I lived in there for quite a few years. Uh, so I lived in it. I worked in it and this little shop. And it did me all right. We, we had some good times in there. Yeah. How, how long were you, were you um, um, living and working in this space? Uh, not very long. Not very long. Um, I can't remember the dates. I think it was 1993 when I bought my first house. So this little workshop was in a yard and one of the houses in the yard came up for sale. Um, so, so I thought, oh, it's a good idea. So I, so I bought this house. It was absolutely knackered and I had to effectively rebuild it, which took a few years. Um, so I bought this house and, and lived next door to the workshop. So obviously all the living accommodation then was converted into workshop. Um, so I had, a, yeah, I had about a thousand square foot, maybe towards the end of, of workable space, uh, but it, it filled up. It, it filled up very, very quickly. Oh, because you kept getting busy. You just kept outgrowing I, I, space. I kept, I kept growing. Yeah, it, it, it was good. Life, life was good. Uh, um, once, interestingly, once I got my own space, um, be, because you've got a presence then in, in, in things like the yellow pages and, and, and advertising, people started to find out about me more of the, I, I used to do craft fairs and things like this and sell my bowls and stuff like that. Um, although that wasn't, by this time I was turning spindles and, and production turning. Uh, but because I'd, I'd got my own space and got my own address and everything, then other businesses started finding me. Uh, and that, when that happened, then that, we, we went through the roof. Yeah. Mm. So you're in this workspace, 90, you, you leave that workspace to go where? Uh, so, 96, I bought this place. The one you're um, in now? The one how, I'm in now. How, how yeah. big is that? This is uh, 3,000 square foot. So, wow. it's on two, on two floors. Um, yeah, yeah. Upstairs, upstairs is just storage and um, uh, all the dust extraction is upstairs and, uh, and what have you, all the stuff like that. Um, all the action happens down here. And, and Mandy's realm, Mandy works for me almost full time these days. Uh, so Mandy's realm is upstairs in the office, um, so getting the money in. How, how, how big is your, how many people work with you? So now there are four of us. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the big boss in charge. Uh, and we have uh, two lads running copy lathes. Uh, when they're not running the copy lathes and producing blanks to put in the lathes, blanks for me, wrapping stuff out for wrapping stuff up for dispatch to send it out. <laughs> That's uh, another lad who used to work for me there. Um, and and Mandy Mandy works uh, a lot more than she wants to, running the office, uh, dispatching, printing stuff off. Um, yeah. So your daughter? No, Mandy, my wife. Mandy, your wife. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Who's not on here? Uh, I don't, I, she's certainly not joining in if she is. Right. <laughs> so you all have worked together. So you go to work together every day. Yeah. I give her Fridays off. Uh, so yeah, we, we, uh, we, we come in separately. Uh, I'm, I'm first in and last out always. Um, she, she rolls in about nine o'clock and rolls out about three o'clock. Uh, and keep, keeps everything running and ticking over and keeps the money coming in. I'm about to ask you that. What do you find is the most challenging thing to your business, although you've done the same thing from the same place for so long? 
the, the biggest challenge, I think, is the quality of the raw materials and getting the raw materials in. How, we, how do you, we, where do you get those? We, we, uh, we use maybe five or six core timber yards um, around the area. One, one unfortunately, has just gone down. One has just gone bust or, or, or shut because of the virus and, and work dried up for them. So we're one timber yard down. So I, it's sort of a, I have to play all the yards off, off against each other. Not so much for price, but for quality. Um, because the quality is, is, is paramount. Uh, and it's getting harder and harder. So, yeah, getting the stuff in and getting it in on time. What, what species of wood do you use most to turn it? We use a cubic meter of pine. Uh, so, 100 meters of 4x4 four four pine every four days. So, How if you can... Uh, so, but that's probably maybe a quarter of the full output. We use a lot of oak, a lot of European oak, a lot of tulip wood. Um, there's, uh, uh, painted furniture is incredibly trendy at the moment, uh, certainly here in the UK. So tulip wood is the best thing for painting. So we use a lot of tulip wood and it's great for turning. Uh, walnut, beech, sapele. Sapele is probably only... Um, exotic, well, it's not an exotic, but the, the only um, sort of rainforest timber we use. Everything else is temperate. Okay. Um, when you get it, is it already kiln dried, ready to go, or do you...? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, if, it, if, it ain't, if it's over 12%, it don't come in. Um, but yes, it, it's all kiln dried hardwood. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, and soft wood. Everything is kiln dried, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we keep this place warm. We keep this place warm and dry. Um, other people who join us come here to get warm in the winter. Um, because I, 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 I don't understand how people can work in the cold. Where, you know, if I, if I make somebody a set of table legs and that goes to a cold workshop and then into a warm house when it's finished, that's a recipe for disaster. So this place is kept warm. Um, so I know that the timber goes out in, in good condition. Right. We have... Let's do the tour. Uh, a tour, right. Well, I can't really. Uh, my insurance company will not allow me to show half of it. They would? No, no, no. There's been a spate, actually, of um, if uh, uh, people posting uh, how nice their workshops are on Facebook, Instagram, you name it, and days later they get turned over. You know, the bad guys are watching this too. Um, so, yeah, I, I, but yeah, the, the, the big stuff, I can show you the big stuff that ain't going to wash. <laughs> show us whatever you can. Yeah, yeah. Look, let, let, me, let me tell you, and, and to, to, to validate what you're saying, when <laughs> Steve goes, I use that excuse too. <laughs> it's not an excuse, Steve, believe me. <laughs> uh, let, to, to validate what you're saying, I work through... COVID, and yeah. the Attorney General and the Department of Labor called me and asked me what was I doing. Yeah. Three, three times I met with the Attorney General, I, I spoke to the Attorney General about um, what we were doing here. So you're right, people are watching. Put you there, there, yeah, 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 and it's a shame. It's a shame. Uh, and yeah, uh, so you have to be careful. I, I think uh, I, I, I'm constantly amazed that people said, oh, look, I'm on holiday. Uh, and I just said, well, I'll go and rob your house then. <laughs> it, it's beyond me. But people do it all the time. Yeah. Uh, so show us whatever you can. Right. So, well, um, uh, this phone. Oh, also, Jack English wanted to know if you could show us the building. Your call. Uh, right, okay. I can't find on this screen how to turn the camera around. So, that's this, there we go. Is, yeah, there we go. There go. So, let's, uh, let's just go out here. Let, just bear with me a sec. I don't know what the Wi-Fi is like when we're walking around. 
So yeah, I'm very proud of this building. This is a, it's a, it's a. Oh. Now that's bright. So there you go. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you raise the camera up a little higher? Just tilt it. So, so yeah, oh, this is all ours. Right, we're just breaking up, so I'm going to go back in. Nice. Okay. So, yeah, this is uh, 1860 something it was built as a, as a, as a mill. This is this area of Yorkshire. Are, are you getting me there, Robert? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This area of Yorkshire was called the Heavy Woolen District, and, and this, this mill was bought for um, sorting rags. And in this, in this area, um, this area is famous for making a, a fabric called shoddy and mungo. Uh, um, and it was basically people brought the rags, they were sorted out and then rewoven re into, into a, quite a low quality fabric. And this was what's wow. called a, a rag oil. So it was a, it was a pokey hole for, for sorting rags. Um, wow. And it, a guy bought it in the 50s and converted it into a joiner shop. And then uh, I was, another guy bought it and made windows in here. And then I bought it off him. Yeah. yeah. And, and you've been there ever since? I've been, uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a lovely, lovely building. I love it, yeah. Is the neighborhood more commercial or more uh, I, it's, residential? It's totally residential. Um, I've got uh, one, two, four houses actually built on. What? What happened is the guy built the mill and then built his workers' houses onto the mill. Um, so I've got, I've got four houses built onto, uh, onto the building. So we have to be careful. I don't use the machinery um, out of hours sort of thing. Um, but we all get on and it's all cool and, uh, yeah, gravy. Yeah. How far do you live from there? Losing you there, Robert. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. I see you. You're good. How, how far do you live from your shop? Uh, I live about three miles that way. Okay, so it's pretty close. Uh, yeah, yeah, not too bad. Um, uh, the mistake I made when I bought the house next to the old workshop is that uh, people found out about that and then came and visited at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning and, you know, you know go away, <laughs> Goober. We know, you just, we don't need you. Um, so, yeah, I learned that mistake. So I'm close <laughs> enough to come if I need to, but I can hide away. Yeah, yeah far, far enough to be away. I, I can see that. I yeah. can see that. People are not caring. They, they don't Indeed. Think. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, I've got a life. Leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> so do you do you do any marketing? Uh, yes, actually. That's, so that's looking down the workshop. Uh, yes, I... Um, Mid-noughties, maybe, maybe 2005, something like this, we, uh, I, this internet came along. Um, and I thought, well, we could, uh, we could sell some on here. So I, I, I built my first website about 2005. Uh, I, and I am constantly, constantly updating websites and, and looking at how to maximize my Google activity, et cetera, et cetera. So you do all that yourself? I do. <laughs> I do, yeah. That's uh, Maddie there, Boomer. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, yes, I, yeah, I do all that myself, yeah, yeah. Um, with a little help occasionally for if I can't get my head around something. Um, uh, but Google, Google are quite helpful. Google will, uh, will help you to earn them money. Um, so they will help you maximize your, your, your advertising, yeah. Um, so uh, Google, um, we do all sorts. We, we do eBay and all that. We've tried Etsy. We, we, we keep trying. We're always trying things. We're always trying new things. Um, Obviously, customers come and go. Um, I've, I've got customers that have been with me 30 years, and I've got customers who, who are just a, a one-off customer. So you've got to keep the presence going, yeah. yeah. So how, where's your furthest customer? How far across the world has your work traveled? Um, we don't do a lot of exporting um, because, quite frankly, it's a pain in the neck. Um, I, I, and with our ridiculous country voting to leave the EU, it's going to get even harder. Um, so we don't go very far afield. Uh, we've got stuff in the States and, and we, we, we do have bits all over the world as it happens, working for, working for 
some of my customers are big shop fitting companies. Um, and of course, they do their shop fitting all over the world. So we've definitely got stuff in, in, in Hong Kong, Saudi Arabia, New York that I know about. But uh, that's via a third party. So that's nothing to do with me. But yeah, we've got stuff all over the world. Yeah. Uh, personally, uh, we've just sent a job. Well, a, a job has just turned up in Canada that we sent out a while ago. Um, it got shipped out there. Um, quite a lot of Europe. Okay. What, how many lathes do you have? Um, we are currently running four lathes. Um, what kind? We, we just have four, well. Um, so, oh, my, my lathe, my lathe, which is my pride and joy. Um, this is interesting. I, I run a Watkin RS10. Uh, just spin you around there. So this is, this is my lathe. Uh, what, what I find really interesting is that me, Richard, and Steve all run the same lathe. So, so that kind of tells you something. I think, uh, what, kind is, what kind does Jack have? Yeah, same, yeah. Jack's got the same lathe, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and there's, there's one or two. Um, um, <laughs> what's that, Jack? Need to spell that. Uh, yeah, said Jack has, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Keith's just drooling there, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, so, yeah, lovely lathe. And, uh, and that's its usual state. That's, we could see the floor on Tuesday morning. And um, this is the, uh, the fallout from that job there. Those, those things are big. Those things are two foot diameter. Wow. So, so yeah, we can get some big stuff on there. But yeah, I, I, I do find it interesting that, uh, that, that me, Steve and Richard all run the same lathe. I think that tells you everything. And there are some other good wood, a lot of good wood turners in this country. I haven't got that stop bar. It's a great... Yeah, you're right, Steve. You need to get that on. It saves a lot of time. Yeah, Steve's just mentioned this stop bar here, which um, that's just a, a piece of wood along there, and I can touch that with my hip, and it turns the lathe off instantly. Oh, that is nice. Which is very useful. Although, just to brag again, these lathes come equipped with a clutch and brake as well. So <laughs> they, they, are, they are very, very good old pattern-making lathes. Uh, how do I keep the dust out of my shoes? I don't. <laughs> That's what your wife's complaining about at night. <laughs> All the time. Uh, yes, I'm not, my dear. No. Yes, yes. Um, which is better than her dad. Her dad was a, an engineer, so he used to bring metal turnings home, which um, are a little bit more annoying. <laughs> so, so, yeah, go on. How many other, how many other lathes do you have? Right, so... Um, and we're down to one hand turning on one hand turning lathe only these days. Um, okay. uh, it's the way it's worked out. So this one here is uh, our biggest copy lathe. Can't really see here how it works. You can see, even though this is a nice big shop, it's absolutely full. We're, we are absolutely full of stuff. Got a lot of machinery in here. So this is a copy lathe. This is the second copy lathe I ever built, and I did build this myself. Wow. Yeah. Um, so the, the bed itself is, I think it's, it's older than this building. Um, I found the bed in an old timber yard somewhere, and I thought, well, that'll do. So the bed and tailstock are original. Everything else is new, electronics. How, long, the, how big is it? Uh, so we can get, uh, I can get nine foot in there. And, of course, I can hand turn that in there as well if I need to. Um, and and these, these, this coffee lathe is running maybe usually five hours, five, six hours a day, five days a week. Wow. Uh, so that's, that's, the, that's the big coffee lathe. And then this sounds daft, but this is the little coffee lathe, uh, which is almost as big. Uh, they're both very, very similar machines. This one's set up for making these, these little bun feet. So these, I, I built my own copy lathes simply because when, when I decided I needed or wanted a copy lathe, I will not say I needed one, but I thought it might have been a good idea and it turned out to be a very good idea. I, I just didn't have the money to buy one. They were, they were even a second hand one back then of this quality was, was 10, 15 grand. And I just didn't have that kind of money back then. So I, I set about building my own. I got all the bits. I was, I was lucky uh, and got a, a copy unit, which is a hydraulic thing that actually does the, 
the copying of the pattern um, and just bolted it all together and, and it works a treat. So building my own lathes, they are set up beautifully. The copy turning is never, and Steve will have something to say about this, but copy turning is never as good as hand turning, not quite as crisp, but we get very close uh, because these are set up so nicely um, because I, I know how to do it. Um, I built them myself so I can fix them myself. Right. That, that's also important is, is not having a machine go down. Have you, Absolutely, ever, built, yeah. have you ever built a copy lathe for someone else? No, 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 no. Uh, no, I, I, I'm a, I'm a wood no, turner. I didn't, I didn't ask yet. I didn't ask yet. <laughs> no, I, I, I like doing what I do. People ask me all the time uh, and, and people come in and say, uh, pe people come in and joinery companies and furniture companies come in and say, how do you get your copy layers running like this? I can, I can't get mine to work. And I'll, I'll help them out and, and tell them how to go on. And generally speaking, it's a question of sharpening the knives, which is, 90% of anything. Um, but generally speaking, these people that come in and ask me how these things are done, I end up doing their turning for them. All right. What? Okay, Steve uses a skew. What it, do you, how many different um, chisels do you use? Very few. Very few. Um, so Steve uses, Steve is an absolute demon with his skew. Um, so let's have a look. This one, let's see if I can get it right. So this one, where are we? This one is similar to Steve's. I don't use that much. My, I'll just turn you around again. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. So my preferred skill, uh, and there are several types of skill. So this is my preferred skill, which is a round skill. So you can see it's just, it's a round bar. It's a round bar of M42 steel, high, high cobalt steel, I think it is. Um, um, and that's how I prefer to use a skill. Um, and, and using a skill is, it terrifies a lot of wood turners. And it is, it is a difficult tool to master, but once you do it, it's, it's a joy. It really is. Okay, let, let me ask you, that, that round skill, yeah. Do you buy it as a chisel or do you just buy the, the steel and make it? No, I, no, they are actually bought as finished tools. Yeah, yeah. Um, one one uh, crown hand tools in Sheffield make them. Um, this is quite a big one. It's 16 mil or 5 eighths wide uh, diameter bar. Um, so crown hand tools in Sheffield. Best tools there are. Uh, and um, I have another one from a guy and I, he's, from, he's in Denmark and I can't pronounce the company. Um, I, I, I tag him all the time, but I cannot pronounce his company. Um, I can't even read the name. Um, but uh, strangely enough, they're actually very, very similar. They use the same steel. Interesting. Okay, let, let me ask you, j just, just to, to um, give him a shout out. Do you have the tool, his tool somewhere where you can show it? Uh, that was it, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. And this is, uh, where are we? Just to show his name so, so we can see it. Uh, let's see. Your, your screen froze, but I'm sure it's temporary. All right, gotcha. Got it. All right, everybody's got that? Thank you. And, I, and I'm sure he'll be happy about that. But I, I can't hear you. The sound is off, but everything else is good. Yeah, your sound's off. Maybe your earphones came unplugged. <laughs> I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. No. 
Um, I don't. I don't know. Let's let's get off and get back on. Two minutes. We're gonna get off and get back on. Are we there? Yes. Right. Good. I don't know what happened then. Bloody good. technology. No. Well. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. I can. How are okay, we doing yeah. now? Yep, yeah, we're, we're good now. Yeah. yeah, but we got to. Right, good, good. And, and I, I wanted to end it there because it was going to stop soon anyway. Oh, right, so okay. Steve is only 80 miles from you. Uh, yeah, about that. Yeah, down in, yeah, just south of Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. Do, have, have yeah. you all, have you been to a shop? No, no, we've uh, we've never met. We we uh, uh, we send each other work for. We all, we all have different strengths, so we send each other work all the time. But uh, no, I've never met Steve. Met Richard a couple of times, but not Steve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. There's a there's kind of a kind of an exhibition up here every year, and and a lot of wood turners. We we all sort of meet at this exhibition as well. Um, but no, I've never met Steve. Or are, are there some older turners you admire that are still living that are not on the internet i i don't i i think i think they've all passed now i think they're all gone um uh there were in in the 80s when i when i was learning i was i was devouring every book i could find um so uh Richard Raffin and Ray Key and uh, so many, so many fine turners. Um, uh, and obviously, there's still a lot of good turners. Well, there are many, many good turners still around. Um, I, I think the problem I had back then was kind of nobody was interested in doing what I, I, I like production turning, strangely enough. Most people don't. What, what's the largest number of pieces you've had an order for? Uh, a single order in one go, maybe 3,000 little bongs, uh, a, t a tiny little. Uh, we, used to, we used to do a job for a very, very big kitchen company, uh, a company called MFI, which, uh, which are gone now. And I think they had four or 5,000 at a time of, of a little collar we made for, a, for the bottom of a pilaster. Uh, there's a job, a job, it, it'll be coming up in the next few weeks actually and if Stace is still watching he'll remember this these things which are rope ladder rungs I think on about 25,000 of those wait a minute hold um, it what, been doing so, those so for a again? lot of years yeah I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get to see it. your screen froze sorry sorry there you see that You've done about twenty-five thousand of those. Uh, yeah, conservative es estimate. Yeah, yeah, I would think so. These wow. are these are rope ladder rungs. They get uh, they get holes drilled in at each end, and they uh, they go into school gyms. So, to be honest, any kid in this country who's been to high school has probably climbed on one of these these rungs. We we make a lot of them. Yeah. Wow. In fact, that was that was. That job was kind of the impetus to make my first copy lathe. Um, I got this job when I was in the, the little workshop uh, and I was swamped. I was working all hours making these things. Um, and, and that was the impetus to start with the copy lathes, copy turning. I bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when you get a box of 2,000 of those and... Uh, but but when, when I say I enjoy copy, uh, uh, production turning, it, it, it's kind of... It, 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 so I'm almost kind of racing myself to to get faster, to see how fast I can make these things. Um, another another very common job we do. I'll show you another one. We've we've got we've got a couple of hundred of these to do in the next couple of weeks, which is a a little buffet, a little stool leg. And those are in just about every pub in the country. I've uh, been making those for 25 years as well. <laughs> wow. So, but then, 
I also love doing, you know, those crazy big turnings that were on my bench there. I, I love doing that as well. Right. So what, where do you want to be in two years? I have no idea. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm thinking a lot about, you know, I'm 53. I've probably got maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 years, if I'm lucky. And I just don't know. Um, I just don't know. In two years' time, pretty much the same. Just keep on nibbling away at productivity, improving machines, new and better machines. Um, what, what machine would you like? What, do you, what machine do you think you're missing? Um, a, a very wide planer. So at, at the moment, I've got a, a planer, which is a, a 300 mil wide or a foot wide, and a nine, uh, sorry, that's the thickness, sir, and a separate planer, which is only nine inch wide, which is just a pain in the neck. Um, and, and I do when I'm going up these big things, I, I really need 500 mil or, or 20 inches wide. So if, if, you, if you're watching this Drew at uh, JMJ, I, I need a I need a, a, a 20 inch plane jointer. Uh, and if you're watching this Drew at JMJ, that's JMJ in Hull. Um, you know where I am. <laughs> Steve said his dad, my granddad, was still full time at 83. You've got oh, business. yeah, God bless him, yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah, he tells, tells tales of his, his dad and granddad all the time, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I cannot imagine retiring, uh, Mandy might have something else to say about that, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, when, when, you've, when you've lived your life making things, you, you, you can't stop. Exactly, you're right, stop and then what? Uh, exactly. No idea. So, yeah, uh, I'll be here. <laughs> what, where's the furthest you've traveled for work? Looking for work or delivering something? De yeah, delivering something, looking at a job, that sort of thing. I, 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 maybe London. Maybe London. Um, how, how far is that from you? Uh, 250 miles. I can never remember. About 250 miles, I think. Okay. All right. That's, that's not, that's not uh, bad. No, we don't. It, it's, it's absolutely fruitless delivering things by hand. It, you know, my time, my diesel. The courier companies are so good around here. Um, it, it, we, we wrap it up. We wrap it up very carefully, put it on a van, and away it goes. And we get, in fact, the only complaint we ever have is that um, it's too well wrapped and nobody can get into the boxes. All right. So... What, what time is it there now? Uh, it is six o'clock. PM. PM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long is your day usually? I am usually in here at um, seven o'clock, quarter past seven. I, I, I leave home at seven o'clock, so I'm usually in here quarter past seven, twenty past seven, something like that. Um, at which time I produce lists, endless lists of what we've all got to do for the day. Um, answer a few emails if possible, although Mandy's much better at that than me. Um, the lads come in at eight o'clock. We change the extractor bags and, and away we are. We, we start work at eight o'clock. The lads finish five, half past, quarter to six, depending on how busy we are, depending on if there's overtime there. Uh, I usually leave at quarter to six. What? That's not my train of thought. Um... I, 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 there, there's something I wanted to ask and, and it escaped me because I'm thinking about um, doing it. <laughs> so you, your, your day is eight, nine hours. Uh, yeah, yeah. What about weekends? I avoid it like the plague. I, I used to work. Um, I've always had the ethic that Saturday mornings is a work day or a working period. Uh, but I've got out of that now. I, I try to avoid coming in at the weekends. Sometimes if we are very, very busy, then I, I'll be in on a Saturday morning. Um, but I, I try to avoid it. Um, you know, I, I, time off is important. It is. And, and even it is. in the evening, even in the evening, I'm, I'm still... 
answering emails and, and, and talking to folk on Instagram and answering, you know, we get a lot of questions and I, I like to answer as much as, as I can. So I'm always doing that. But, you know, there's an eye on the telly and uh, uh, it, it, it's not all work. But That's yes, I, yeah. If you could change anything about your social media, what would you do? Uh, nothing, I don't think. I'm quite happy with it all. Uh, uh, people ask me questions, I answer questions. Um, no, I, 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 it, I like it. I, I, I got on Instagram. I got on Instagram to, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time and I thought, I'll put something back and show folk how it's done, show folk what can be done. And, uh, how, how long have you been on Instagram? Uh, seven years, maybe, seven, eight years. Quite early, quite early. Um, quite early on Instagram's inception, I, I started. Uh, my daughter, my daughter sort of, was on it and I thought well, what's this and and uh and I thought oh well this might this might be I'd messed about on uh, YouTube um and Facebook and well, and I, I could never get on uh so I could never get on with it I could never make it do what I wanted to do I just wanted to post pictures and say look this is how you do it here you go and then video came along on Instagram and then you know it all took off um so I just thought it was a good way of putting stuff back as it happens it brings in quite a lot of work as well um, but that wasn't how I did it. Um, ju just to give something back to, to show for what can be done. Yeah. Right. Okay. So someone asked, and, and I'm sure uh, this is going to start a whole other conversation. Do you watch football? <laughs> um, it's, a fu it's a funny conversation in our house. Is that I have start. I don't watch. Fo I've started taking an interest in the theatre behind football, the management, and all that malarkey. Uh, no, I don't watch football. Uh, cricket's my game. Cricket? Cricket, yeah. yeah. R Richard said the same thing. Yeah, but cricket, uh, yeah, Richard used to play cricket, I believe, yeah. Uh, but yes, I, uh, I, yes, I, I realise uh, he likes his cricket as well, yeah. yeah. Who's it? You have a favourite team? Uh, Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a standing joke in the UK that uh, Yorkshire men are obsessed with cricket, which we are generally. Me, me and my friend, uh, me and my best friend from school, or one of them, uh, talk about, text about, chat about cricket all the time. Uh, this summer, because there's no cricket on yet, then we're watching all the replays. Luckily, I've forgotten all the old matches, so I'm enjoying watching them. Scott remembers all the old matches, so he's telling me what happens, and I'm saying shut up. And yeah. Do, do you ever go to any matches? Uh, very, very rarely. Um, uh, the problem with most of this sport in this country, it's all, it's all quite elitist. Um, uh, me, me and my mate would love to go to Lords in London, the home of cricket, uh, but getting a ticket, it's just not possible. You've got to right. have uh, uh, the face that fits and the right amount of money. Absolutely. And rugby is the same, unfortunately. Football is, football is far more popular because uh, it is so much less elitist. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, I, I, I think, we, is there anything that I missed? Uh, you tell me. I, I don't know. Uh, so you I got any more so. questions? Uh, I, I certainly don't. I mean, I'm, uh, I need another cup of coffee now, which makes, uh, which makes life quite difficult. Um, uh, no, I, I mean, if anyone's got any questions, if anything pops up, um, uh, Mandy will be getting quite annoyed because it's uh, burrito time soon. Uh, okay. All right, so so we'll, I'll I'll let you go. Listen, right. man, thank you very much. I really really appreciate it. No problem, no problem. I I hope uh, I hope people found it uh, interesting what I get up to here and uh, and liked it. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think and I I did this because you know we all follow people that we admire. And yeah. It's kind of cool to get to know you. It is. It is. Um, it's, it, it, it's lovely that the world is so small now. You know, I, I, can, I, can, I can look at a, a wood turner in Korea and, and just be blown a bit away by what these guys are doing. Uh, you know, and, and guys, guys in the States. Um, 
guys in, in, in you know I've, I've, I've guys that are following Chile and what have you and it's it's just great that it's such a global village these days and we we all talk the same language and it's it's just fantastic. Yeah, uh, Keith asked if you had turning heroes. Turning heroes. Um, besides yourself. Uh, beside myself and. Uh, Do you, do you, know, you mentioned the couple I mean, that were no longer with us. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, and, and most UK people will know all those. Um, David Ellsworth was, a, was a, an American turner. Uh, I don't know if he's still around. Um, he was... It, I saw him turn, actually. He was a... He was a, a, a um, just say no, Steve. Yeah, you're quite right, yeah. That Steve Jones is a lot of crap, you know. You don't want to know him. Um, yeah, David Ellsworth blew my mind. Uh, it, it was a, an exhibition that I was at in 87. Uh, and what he was doing with the bow gouge was absolutely incredible. That sticks in my mind. But just everyone, the, the books that I used to devour, uh, and now that I look at everybody on, on, on um, Instagram, just, you know, anyone who can use a tool has got to be appreciated. Yep, I, I agree. You know, I, I used to give Steve a hard time about coming on, and then he, uh, um, we figured it out, so I'm going to leave him alone. Yeah, right, fair enough, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, great I, work. Yeah, yeah, Steve's, Steve's another level. He really is. Yep, he, he, yeah. he really is a machine, yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Both and I, and I, will, I will pop in. Uh, strangely enough, my, my daughter goes to uh, university in Falmouth, which is like the back end of the world from here. And it takes us six hours to get. But we do actually pass Steve's place on the way. Uh, and one day, I, you know, I keep threatening to pop in and just turn up on his doorstep. Yes. Please, please go unannounced. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. You don't want to announce yourself. Just turn up and uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see, see, see him having a catch and throwing a spindle over the workshop, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, Matt, thanks again, brother. I really, really appreciate your time. No problem. Pleasure. Pleasure. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I you. hope people enjoyed it. Yeah, good. Yes, we have. Enjoy your You'll look after yourself. Look after yourself over there. And, uh, yeah, stay cool. Is it warm over there at the moment? Yeah, it's warm. Yeah, it's, it's like 90-something today. Yeah, it's crazy here. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, stay cool. Look after yourself. Stay safe. Yeah. All right, brother. You too. Thanks again, Dave. Thank you very much. Cheers. All the best now. Bye-bye. Cheers.